All right, everybody, welcome back. I uh, totally blew it uh, when I said that uh, the aileron was completely finished and I was going to move on to the flap. Before you do that, you have to do your uh, push rod work, which is what I'm doing now. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I can explain this. So, for starters, let me backtrack a little bit here. I still have my reference board in place here. Obviously the aileron is still attached and it's free to move. There's no kinking, there's no binding, you've got your spacing and all that correct that I talked about in my last video. So with your aileron completely ready to go you start on your push-pull tubes. So here's where I am right now. I have the push-pull tube made. I have the alignment neutral position jig provided by Vans in place and I have both ends of the push-pull tube connected. So what happens is with this jig in place, this, let me see, it's this aluminum plate here. With that in place, you can see when you move the push rod, the push pull tube, the, the plate will bottom out on the spar, but you want to make sure that it's completely seated, so to speak. So you can see on this end, there's a gap here from when I move this. You just want to make sure that you push that flat against the spar. So this edge here of the jig is flat against the spar. So with that set, with the tube connected, come back over here and just check your alignment. Make sure that this hasn't moved. Check your reference marks, your reference lines. Make sure this hasn't moved. And again, the trailing edge of the aileron should be in line with that reference. I don't know how good that's going to come out. So now this is set. So this push rod is now the correct length that it needs to be. The other thing I wanted to point out, first of all, is my beagle. The ball ends, these will rotate here in the pivot. You want to make sure that the ball end at this end is nice and horizontal. And you want to make sure that the ball end on the aileron side here, you want to make sure that it's vertical. In other words, I don't know if I can explain this, you don't want you don't want this rod end to be twisted and you don't want the other rod end to be twisted because then there's a potential that they can bind. If they're both twisted opposite of each other so to speak they can kind of hang up while they pivot. If this one is rolled and the other one is rolled um, they can kind of bind. You know what I'll do? I'll take this rod out and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about because I have to I have to take it out anyway to tighten up the jam nuts. The other thing you want to look for is you remove let me let me do this. I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to do it one-handed. With the alignment jig removed, you wanna move your aileron up and down and make sure that you have clearance between your rod and the hole that it passes through in the trail or in the uh, the rear spar. So just move the aileron through its complete travel and, and make sure you don't have any binding here where it passes through. And you want to make sure that you have your rivets clearance as well so the rivets don't get hung up in here if you have that much travel. Actually I don't think there is. I'm not sure. But um, let me get that jig out of there and, and I'll try to explain some of this a little bit better. 
So the jig is now out and my aileron is free to travel. So here's what I'm talking about. When you move your aileron through its full travel range, it can only go up so far because it will hit the, the, uh, the push-pull tube will hit inside the hole there. You can see it hitting, which is fine because at that point, you're almost creating a straight line between the push-pull tube and the bell crank, and you don't want that to go over center because it will lock up on you. So this is fine here for now. And then when you drop it down all the way as it will go, as far as it will go this direction, it's hitting on, I don't have a stop in place at the moment, so it's just hitting on this bracket here. Down in here, it's hitting here. Because like I said, I don't have my, I don't have any stops in place right now. Any travel limit stops. And again, you just want to make sure that as the push-pull tube passes through that opening that it doesn't hit anything, it doesn't rub. Your rivets here are not hitting on anything. And you get your full range of motion. It's the same here, this bell crank. You can see that this rivet right here passes nicely underneath the bell crank. There's no interference. So I've got absolute full travel on this aileron with no stops. Um, later on, you actually will measure the travel for the aileron up and down, and you want to, there are maximum travel limits that you have to adhere to, but I will cover that when I get to that point. But right now, I just want to make sure that I have absolute full uninhibited travel with no um, binding of the push-pull tube. If you do have clearance issues here, you can manipulate you can manipulate your washers here in here to move this ball end in or, or left and right to give you more clearance through that hole. But for me, it's just a simple, just a, a simple washer between the ball end. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. I just have a single washer between the bracket and the ball end on this side. And that gives me the clearance I need for this hole. All right, let me take the push-pull tube out and I'll show you what I'm talking about with keeping the ball ends. Uh, perpendicular to one another. Here's the push-pull tube just uh, mounted in a vise so I can kind of explain what I'm talking about here. So this is the bell crank end of the push-pull tube and this rod end is horizontal and it gets sandwiched between its metal bracket bell crank pieces, right? So you've got pieces that go through here you do not want this to be rotated so that the ball is jammed in between your pieces. If this is rotated and jammed in between here, and this one is the same way, then you basically negate the point of having the ball end. There's no movement because this end is rotated and it's jammed between its its brackets. This one is rotated and jammed between the brackets and that's going to cause you issues. What you want to make sure is that this ball end and this rod end, I guess they're called either way, you want to make sure that they're perpendicular. So you want one horizontal and you want the other one completely perpendicular to it. That way you have the, the rod itself is able to roll around a little bit on these ends. Uh, when, you're, when it's traversing this way, it's, it's got freedom to rotate as well as it's transitioning because you've got the movement of the ball here on each end. 
without this being tweaked, I guess, if that makes sense. So when you sight down your rod end, after you have the length correct, you, you adjust the length to get your um, trailing edge of your aileron to line up with your reference uh, board. Once you have the length adjusted, you want to set your ball ends perpendicular to one another. So if you sight down, if you set this one vertical, and you sight down to the other one, you want to make sure the other one is horizontal to this one. Once you have that set, you can tighten up your jam nuts and you should be ready to roll. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to go over this one more time super quick and then uh, I'll move on to the main, the larger push-pull tube that comes in from the fuselage side comes in through here and connects. All right, stand by. Okay, one more time. Your lines are marked on your rib for your cord line center line. You have your wood lined up with those lines and extended beyond the end of the aileron trailing edge. Your aileron is in place. You got your gaps set correctly, you've got your bolts in, everything's tight, everything's rotating on what it's supposed to be rotating, the bolt is not the rotation point. Everything is set. You've had your skins in place to help make sure everything was square and true. Again, proper gap. Your uh, brackets are straight, they're not bent. You've got appropriate washers and stuff in here, you've got everything tight, right? just like we talked about before. Now you move on to the push-pull tubes. You got your push-pull uh, jig in place here. Your neutral, aileron neutral jig is in place. This back edge of the plate is tight against the spar. You can see when I move this and put it back, the plate moves, so you want to tighten up that gap. You want to make sure it's flat against the spar. You've got it connected on your other end here. You've got your washer spaces in here correct to set the tube left and right. Make sure you got your washers in there. The washers are dictated by clearance here. When you move your aileron, you want clearance between the tube and this opening and changing the washer stack inside here will move this left and right to help you achieve that. See this plate moved again because I moved the aileron. You need to make sure that that stays put. Make your length adjustment on your push-pull tube with the jig in place and then you verify the position here with your reference and the trailing edge end of the aileron. Once those are set, take the jig out Move your aileron through its full range of travel. Make sure nothing's binding, nothing's rubbing, anything like that. When you're happy with that, take your tube out. Make sure your rod ends are perpendicular to one another and then tighten your jam nuts. So you can see I've got mine adjusted for length and I got the jam nuts on. And you can see, see, how much play I have in there. It's, it's free, to, free to roam. And obviously it's the same on this end as well. Of course I don't have, I have not made my, this is where I put my mechanical stop. I need to make that. But even so, the ball end still has movement. If this ball end was cocked in this direction, and this rod end was cocked in the opposite direction, this tube would not be free to rotate. So again, just make sure that those rod ends are perpendicular to each other and you'll have, you'll have good movement in there so it can do what it needs to do when it's traversing in and out. All right, enough of that. Let me move on to the, the main push-pull tube here coming in from the fuselage and uh, we'll continue on.